Welcome to this video on SOLIDWORKS CAM and CAMWORKS package options. My name is Robert French and I'm an applications engineer at Go Engineer. So the purpose of this video is to kind of break down this spreadsheet. And this spreadsheet is essentially a representation of all the different CAM packages that are available for purchase. Uh, you see those kind of package names listed across the top there. Starting on the left with SOLIDWORKS CAM standard with yellow, working all the way to the right into full CAMWORKS Premium on the far right hand side. And then on the left hand side in list form, um, we see a bunch of different rows for each of the different you know, package or features or options, different functionalities that are available within each one of these packages. And I wanted to kind of break each of these down, give everyone a healthy idea of you know, what, what do each of these items mean and, and what package level do I have to buy in order to get it. So starting with SOLIDWORKS CAM standard, this is what we are talking about when we, you know, mention the included CAM package in the, in the new SOLIDWORKS 2018 active subscription customers. So this is what they have access to. It's essentially simple two and a half axis milling with limited three axis, which in this case means Z level finishing. So two and a half axis is a three axis machine, but you're only able to move in two of the axes simultaneously. And I'll explain more about that. We have tolerance-based machining, you know, with the up and coming MBD and, and model-based definition. Parts of CAM works, parts of our tool paths, parts of our strategies can be automated or driven, you know, use different strategies based on the tolerance values associated with our part. Pretty cool little functionality. And you also get the NC editor, which is numerical control editor. It's basically a, a, a an advanced WordPad editor for editing the G code after you've spit it out of SolidWorks and CAMWorks. So, real briefly, just explaining, you know, making sure everyone understands machining, three axis machine. We're typically talking about being able to move in Z, the purple, uh, whether it's positive or minus, X positive or minus represented by X, and Y positive or minus represented by that uh, green arrow. So these are the three axes that we're commonly referring to uh, when we talk about three axis machining or even two and a half axis. So a little bit more, looking at this part right here, it has you know a combination of what we would call two and a half axis features or flat bottom features. You can see up top some holes drilled and a couple slots machined. Those are all to a equal depth, to a uniform depth. That's really what we're talking about when we say two and a half axis feature. But a three axis feature is that funnel shape in the middle. It's got contours, it's not an even level, it's not a uniform depth. That's when we apply what we call our Z level finishing pass, our kind of simple three axis machining that we're able to apply. But that Z level finishing, it looks nice and smooth in that isometric view, but if we look at that from a pure side view, you can really start to understand the Z level finishing. Z being the up and down direction in this side view and you can see that each finishing pass we're doing there is kind of locked onto a Z level and that doesn't give us the best quality um, that we can achieve when we have higher end packages that are that are really capable of following those surfaces moving in all three axes or four and five axes all at the same time. Moving on we have SOLIDWORKS CAM Professional the first kind of upgrade package still branded SOLIDWORKS CAM that includes volume mill which is kind of this high speed machining routine. It's a uh, also known as adaptive clearing or high speed uh, roughing. Um, essentially a, a tool path that uh, allows customers or allows users to really get the most out of the machine, run it at high speeds and, and really, really ramp it up going, uh, you know, as fast as possible, as much as possible uh, uh, kind of clearing tool path. It also allows us to handle assemblies. So that's great when you want to represent fixed ring, clamps, you know, other stuff in your machine that you're trying to protect, you're not trying to drive your toolpath into. Uh, assemblies gives us access to that and, and makes us a little bit more capable in, in avoiding fixtures and things like that. Indexing, I'll cover in a sec here. Configurations is just what you would think it is, just like at a SolidWorks. Different parts can have different configurations and uh, SolidWorks CAM Professional allows you to kind of deal with those different configurations to, uh, you know, represent different workflows and things, much like how normal configurations in SOLIDWORKS would work. And then lastly, we get two axis turning, and I'll explain a little bit about that as well. But real quickly, what do we mean by in indexing? Well, if you look at a part like this, 
right? We've got holes kind of on this top uh, face of the part and holes kind of on the front face of the part. If we were machining this, you know, drilling these holes out, it would require two different setups on our machine. One orientation or one setup where the part is as you see it, and that yellow arrow would kind of represent our um, end mill or our, our drill in this case coming down. The part would need to be set up in the machine like that to machine those holes, but then it would require an additional setup, right? We'd have to kind of remove the part from the machine or reorient the part within the machine manually, relock it down in order to machine this next setup where we have these two other holes on the other face, right? The drill can achieve all six of these holes in one setup. It needs one setup for the holes on the top, all of those four holes, and then an additional setup for the two holes on the side here. Well, what indexing allows for is it's not a three-axis machine anymore. It's what we would call a three plus two. Not necessarily five axis. I know three plus two is five, but three plus two is slightly different than five. Five means I can move in all five axes at the same time. Three plus two indexing means I'm machining in three axes, three axis tool paths, right? I can only move three axes axes at the same time. But if I have a rotary slash turntable like you see in this picture here, I can actually mount the part onto that onto this mechanism. And this mechanism is is kind of added onto our end mill machine. And the different rotational axes we see there, right? We got one kind of rotating around this platen wheel, another one, you know, this 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 tilt angle happening here as well. By mounting the part on this on this rotary table, we can reorient the part without having to manually refixture it. And that's what we call indexing, switching between these different positions, utilizing a fourth and fifth axis, but only utilizing those to switch to different positions, indexing, rather than having our machine cut the part while these additional rotary and tilt axes are going, which would be five axis machining. We also have turn, and we call it two axis turn. So you have a fundamentally different machining process on a turn machine. We're no longer spinning the tool on a stationary part. We're holding the tool stationary and spinning the part and spinning around that, that orange arrow, around that uh, what would be the red axis. And that, that red axis is one of the motions of the tool, one of these two axis axes when we talk about two axis turn, right? And that kind of controls where the tool would cut along the length of the part. We also have the second axis, the blue arrow, which is kind of co controlling diameter as we machine this part on a turn machine. Moving on, we have CamWorks standard, right? The first CamWorks package, which, ad which adds this additional functionality, sub spindle and two turret support, as well as two and a half axis milling and rotary milling, which you can see highlighted there on the right in, in the green box. Now, when we talk about sub spindle and two turret support, here's a picture of a more advanced lathe where we have, you can see, two turrets, which are commonly hold, what we refer to as holding the tools. These turrets kind of rotate and have different tools along them um, that we might use at different stages during the part. And we also have two spindles, a main spindle and a sub spindle. You can have different parts in each of those spindles. You can have one part that's kind of handed off between the two just to kind of get at different aspects of the part and cut it in different ways and access it in different ways. Rotary milling is kind of four axis, right? We have our three axis end mill, which has X, Y, and Z movement, kind of represented by that red tool holder and the gray and, and gold tool kind of protruding out the bottom of that. But then we also have a tilt axis that can rotate the part, kind of giving us wrapped, we, we can machine what we call wrapped features typically. The only limitation on this is our tool has to be pointing at the center of rotation. So it's not full-blown four axis with, with you know, a lot of customized customization. It's a little more limited than that in that our tool, once again, has to be pointing at the center of rotation. Camworks Milling Professional, moving on here. You can see the additional items added in that graphic on the right-hand side, highlighted in the green box once again. We are now able to do three axis undercutting with standard and custom tools. So you can see here that same uh, kind of funnel mold that was in earlier pictures, but now looking at it from a side view, there's actually two slots running down the side of it. You can see how we can get a tool into those slots as long as our cutting diameter in that picture on the left, the cutting diameter represented in gold is a little bit bigger than our shank diameter represented there in gray. We can actually do what we call undercutting. 
That's done right there with a keyway cutter. It's also commonly done with it, what we call a lollipop cutter that you can see in the, the additional picture there. And then we also have the ability to do mill turn. So mill turn is a combination of milling, right? The three axis milling we've been discussing, as well as being able to do turn features as well. So you can see in the info on the left, we have our turn part, you know, rotating about that red line and then we have a mill coming in and having its own right rotating the tool about uh, around its own orange axis we see there so in the picture on the right we see the wrapped feature that that kind of wrapped pocket going around the, the, the cylinder the green arrow pointing at it that is the uh, rotary milling part right the tool is facing directly at the center of rotation and we could achieve that feature but the flat that's cut out in the blue box out on the tip of that part is a mill turn feature, right? The mill needs to be able to move away from pointing at center, it needs to be able to move left and right from that center of rotation in order to cut that flat that you see there that isn't a wrapped feature anymore, but very much just a, a, a mill feature, right? All right, moving on into Camworks Turning Professional. You can see that some of these packages have an overlap, right? Camworks Turning Professional also includes mill turn. But we also get the four axis turning for CNC lays and the sync manager for synchronized machining and Camworks virtual machine standard. Mill turn, we've already discussed. Four axis turning is slightly more advanced than the option we saw before of sub spindle and two turret support. Sync manager is about having operation based procedures where we're handing off parts between the spindles. Certain operations are coming at certain like logical progressions. There's a handoff of parts. You could actually have two different parts, completely completely different parts running in each spindle and hand off at certain times, right? You finish operations on setup one on, on the main spindle. Once those are done, you hand it off to the sub spindle. That sub spindle finishes out the part. And while that sub spindle is finishing out the part, the next part is loaded into the main spindle. So it's, it's really a, a big step up in automation and, and synchronization of your machine and, and really having a, you know, moving, a lot of moving parts uh, kind of happening, right? Both uh, literally and kind of, uh, uh, you know, in terms of the bigger, bigger scheme in the, in the project sense, right? We also get Camworks Virtual Machine. So there is a simulation within uh, SolidWorks and Camworks where you see just a real simple, you know, tool cutting the part gives you gives you some pretty good information about am I hitting every feature am I cutting what I think am I cutting too much cutting too little but that's really just simulating off of the 3d line geometry that you're creating in, in the in the graphics window there in SolidWorks and Camworks this machine simulator is a true G code simulator so this is after you've used your post processor which is converting all that 3d line data all those tool paths into actual G code, into the actual XYZ numeric code you see in the left hand window of this picture. This is a lot more in depth of a simulation. We, we've, we've spit out the G code in the form that the machine's going to see it. And we're now running directly off that G code, once again, running off the G code as opposed to just making the, the tool follow the line, the, the 3D sketches in our software. So. It checks for a lot more stuff. You can see you obviously have full machine models and you're checking for collision between any of the components now as well. So you're, you're really, once again, taking a much more in-depth look at everything that's involved in this machining process and really checking for any issues before you actually take this program out to an end mill to run it, right? Um, the classic phrase I've been hearing at all the uh, conventions recently is crash pixels, not parts, right? Any er errors we find here are far cheaper than any errors or crashes out on the actual machine. And then once again, the full-blown package, the last one here that includes pretty much everything, actually everything that I've discussed up until this point, is true four and five axis simultaneous milling for parts and assemblies. So remember our rotary and tilt table from earlier? That was used once again earlier for only for indexing move the part to a different position, then let X, Y, and Z uh, axes operate it, on it. Rotate the part to another position, let X, Y, and Z operate it on it. But we're never moving um, X, Y, and Z, and then these rotary and tilt axes all at the same time. 
in the full-blown package, four and five axes simultaneous, all five axes can be moving at the same time. And that's what allows for these really complicated parts like this rotor fin, right? We, we really want the tool path to follow very accurately, very swooping, very, you know, kind of fluid, following part surfaces, following the geometry, not limited to Z level finishing or, or two and a half axis, right? Let all five axes move at the same time to get the tool exactly where you want for this very, very complicated part that needs a good surface finish, needs high quality of finish on its parts. So that's it for this video. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope it, bring a, hope it bring, brought a little clarity to, to the different packages and, and some of the terminologies within CAM. Thanks. Mm -hmm.